Agelegip Soni is an NYC-based lawyer and social justice advocate. When she is not in the courtroom, you can find her singing or on the radio on Cosmos FM. And Agelegi joins me to chat all about it. Hi. Hi, Tina. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for joining me today. So you wear many, many different hats as a lawyer, social justice advocate, singer, and radio host. That's right. All I mean, very different things. Lifestyle. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're all very different things. So what makes them all a good outlet for you? Yes, that's a great question. And you know, everyone asks me something similar and you th you'd think that by now I have a good answer to it. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say that basically um, all the different fields kind of complement each other and give it, you know, give me a good balance. I don't think I could do one and not the other. It's weird. I think I would go insane if I just did music or if I just did law. Um, I think the law takes care of my wallet and the music takes care of my soul kind of thing. Um, but yeah. And the radio is also something that happened kind of recently. Um, shout out to my co-producer, Katerina Jusos. Um, it's the show Counterpoint on Cosmos FM in New York every other Thursday. And it's a great, great um, way to connect with people and create a platform to talk about important topics. And I'll share a, a funny story about the radio if you want a little later. Yeah. Did you want to share it now? <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. So basically what happened recently that gave me kind of a newfound appreciation for the radio is that I got a really exciting gig in Greece from it because one day we happened to play an excerpt from one of my recent concerts on air and someone heard it and then looked me up on YouTube and then connected me with uh, this person in Greece that was having a private party and long story short um, it was basically like a paid vacation and I met some great people and we created lifelong memories from it and it's crazy to think that all of that happened because of the radio. So yeah, it's still a great outlet and people should support it as much as they can. That's so exciting. And that's maybe one of the things about you wanting to have so many different outlets as well is that you never know who you're going to meet, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I think life is all about relationships and it's yeah. all about people. So I enjoy every second of it. Yeah. And it's all about having, I think, really meaningful and fun uh, conversations too. Yeah, absolutely. And with music, you definitely get that. With with law, you certainly get that. A lot of it is stressful, so it's nice to have, you know, that outlet. Um, and in full disclosure, this interview is coming at a time when my personal life is kind of chaotic. There's so many things going on, and you know, it's great. But it's nice to have that form of expression because that's my motto. It's like whenever something happens that either makes me really happy or you know something that's hurtful, you know, because those things happen too. It's like, okay, let me write a song about it. And something great comes out of it because it's based on real emotion. And that's what it's about, I think. Yeah. Well, again, like, yeah, I want to talk about all of your different outlets. We'll start with law. So when it comes to law, I read that your dad encouraged you to get into the field. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I jokingly say to people that <clears throat> my dad and I would get into fights, not physical fights, <laughs> verbal fights. And um, he would tell me I have a big mouth, I should become a lawyer. And surprisingly, that's one of the things I actually followed his advice on and became a lawyer. I'd be lying if I said I always wanted to be one. I, I went through different phases. <clears throat> At some point, I think I wanted to be a flight attendant because I like the uniforms and I like to travel. Uh, and then I think I wanted to be a psychologist, whatever. But uh, fast forward to today, <clears throat> I went to law because um, I, I don't want to sound cliche, but I was always very sensitive to injustice and, and people being taken advantage of. And unfortunately, we live in a society where the strong prey on the weak and the people who have resources use them at the expense and detriment of other people, um, and they get away with it. So the law, I think, is a good way. It gives us the tools to kind of, you know, shut down some of that behavior. And, you know, I, I went to a, a law school that was primarily focused on public interest and social justice, like you mentioned. Um, and... I really had an eye-opening exposure to topics that I, I think I was too privileged to be aware of before, if that makes sense. Um, so I think it's really important we as lawyers have the privilege to, to do that, to use our power, because knowledge is power. 
you know, um, and the legal system can be a great tool if it's used correctly um, for change. What's incredible as well is that your career in law and social justice has taken you around the world at, as well. I know that your first experience um, with social justice was with the United Nations. Tell me about that because that's really incredible. Sure. So that was um, before law school. Uh, during college, I studied abroad in Switzerland, in Geneva. And study abroad in Geneva is not what you think of when you, th when you think study abroad, you know, party, you know. <laughs> outside of the US, whatever, drink at the age of 18. Anyway, <laughs> I've, I've just had friends that had very different study abroad experiences, but it was, it was great in the sense that um, Geneva is a city full of diplomats, basically, and I worked for a nonprofit organization that monitored the United Nations. So I met a lot of great people and our job was really to expose things that were going on and things that the UN could do differently. So. That was my first exposure to international law and kind of international relations. And then I followed that track a little bit in law school because I did, um, I participated in a clinic for human rights and gender justice. And that brought me to the United Nations again, uh, this time through Colombia because I was a student attorney with a, uh, a really great team of other attorneys and advocates. And, uh, we did field research and we um, talked to local women. You know, we visited Cali for a few days and we, um, our, our main goal was to really target certain issues and uh, present them at a report that made its way to the United Nations Human Rights Council. So, um, and you know, it contained firsthand experience and interviews that we did with these women regarding issues such as land access and gender violence and healthcare access. Because unfortunately that those kinds of violations happen throughout history when there are more powerful populations. You know, they go to a land, they exploit the, the land's resources, no matter who's staying there, they're like, okay, this is our land now. And people get displaced because of it. And it's happened in many different locations throughout the years. So, you know, I, what I did was a very, very, very tiny part of the work that needs to be done. And there's great work being done out there. Um, I'll be honest right now, I'm, I'm practicing real estate. So, you know, it, it's, it's very different, but, but there's a lot of social justice work to be done. And I think um, all attorneys should, should dedicate a, a part of their practice as much as possible to work on issues that, that affect, you know, the public interest, because there's so much work to be done. So Agaliki, you sing everything from traditional Greek music to Latin jazz, and I know that you also blend the two as well. The latest song is Samba Griega. I hope I said that right. Yes. <laughs> um, so what is it about these different genres that speak to you? Well, I was always a very curious person. Uh, artistically, I, I couldn't just settle on one genre. Um, when I was young, I started singing traditional Greek music. And actually a lot of people always tell me, why do you always like all the old stuff? You're so young, uh, but I do. I, I like the stuff from the 1930s and the, the 1960s, like the golden era. Yeah. Um, and what really fascinates me, it's doing jazz remakes of those old songs. That's, that's one thing. Um, but I also always loved Latin music. I love dancing to Latin music. Um, I love how happy it is and how it, it makes people want to dance as well. And yes, like you said, the Samba Griega single is the first song that was officially released and it's out there now. It's a Latin jazz single. And I think the major project that we're working on, uh, that I'm working on now is an album release in the spring of uh, 2022. So that's going to be like world music. World music is a way of saying, you know, there's a little bit of everything in there. Uh, there's going to be some Greek tunes as well, original, but also some covers. So yeah, I, I just couldn't settle on one, on one type of music. And I, you know, try to blend all of them kind of together and see what comes out. And the result is always exciting. <laughs> Well, tell us about this, this new song. Sure. Yeah. So uh, the lyrics were written by Lina Nikolakopoulou. Uh, she is a very well-known lyricist in Greece. Um, she has written songs like Vinata Vinata, for example. And it's kind of a poetic love story about two people that 
meet, I guess. And the, the whole uh, vibe is, you know, let's go out and have a good night and, and not go to bed anytime soon, basically is what it says. <laughs> um, and it was arranged by Espiro Saxaras and it was composed by Daphne Alexandri. And we recently did the music video. It was released maybe a month or two ago. Uh, it was my first experience kind of working on, on an official music video. It was a great learning experience. <laughs> it was a lot of work, especially because there was a lot of rain this summer in New York uh, and we were shooting outdoors. So there was dancing involved. There was all kinds of things. And I keep saying this, I haven't gotten to it yet, but there is going to be a Samba Griega dance challenge nice. whereby you guys can listen to the song and come up with a small choreography or something. And I will come up with exciting prizes. I will pick a couple of winners and that's going to be that. So it's coming up. Very cool. That sounds <laughs> like, like a lot of fun. Yeah. As soon as I have a moment to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's talk about Cosmos FM because I, you're the co-host of Counterpoint on Cosmos. Um, how did that, well, we talked about how the opportunity came about, but tell me more about, for those who haven't heard the show, tell us about it. Sure. So Counterpoint is on 91.5 Cosmos FM. And again, shout out to my co-producer, Katerina Huso. She is also an attorney and she specializes in employment law. So the two of us co-produce the show um, because we're full-time lawyers, we never really prep beforehand. We kind of just go in the studio and we say what's on our minds. A lot of times we interview people and our um, main premise is interviewing young professionals. Some of them are Greek Americans, but not all. And we're trying to find people that are inspiring and are excelling in their fields. And it could be anything. I mean, we've interviewed artists, but also entrepreneurs, you know, um, we interviewed one person who founded a, a nonprofit organization to clean the oceans in Greece and they like lifted so much plastic out of the ocean. And so that's kind of, we're trying to draw connections between people like that, inspire people. And other times it'll just be the two of us kicking it back and talking about legal issues or just current events and, you know, try to play good music on there and, and things like that. But I love it because like I said before, it really provides some great opportunities to meet new people. and out of those relationships, great things can flourish. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And because this is a Gappy Greek radio where we celebrate the love of everything Greek, I'd like to know more about the importance for you to stay connected to your Greek roots and how that informs maybe all of the different um, outlets that you have as well. It's absolutely very important. It's um, kind of inseparable. It's part of for me, it's part of who I am. It's part of my identity, uh, just like music is, for example. Uh, and it gives me, I, you know, it gives me strength and it gives me passion. Like Greek people are very, there's a very rich history in our culture, uh, very rich, many different things. So uh, I'm very proud of it. And I implement it wherever, um, yeah, what, whatever I'm doing. Well, again, Keith, thank you so much for joining me today. It was so fun talking to you. Thank you, Tina. Thanks so much for having me and congratulations on your show. Thank you. And to keep up with Ageliki, you can head over to her YouTube channel at Ageliki. Don't forget to subscribe.